What about doing the hypothesis test? Sorry, we're not breaking yet. Uh, uh, wishful thinking. Um, I already told you this, uh, some of the results for the sum of squares. Um, the F statistic. Well, you could see it in the table before, but here it's now. It could also be written like this, MS treatment by MSE. So it's measuring the group difference relative to the, to the within group variability. So it measures how different are the groups relative to the how much uh, fluctuation are there within groups. When it is done exactly like this, I mean standardizing with k minus 1 and n minus k like this, it turns out that when there is no group difference, so now we do the hypothesis test thinking. The hypothesis is no difference between the groups. The question is how large should this F be? But it's clear, right, that since the SS treatment, the one that measures group difference, right, the more the groups are different, the higher the uh, numerator here, right, the, the higher the SSTR and hence the, M, uh, the MSTR. So it's pretty clear if you think about it that this F, of course, measures some kind of uh, relative group difference. So and the larger the group differences are, the larger this number, the big question that goes back to the standard hypothesis thinking way is how large should this be for us to dare to claim those groups to be really statistically significantly different, right? The same thinking. The result that we rely on is the one that tells us that when no group difference is there under the null hypothesis, such a measure like this becomes an F distribution. Which is maybe a distribution that we meet for the first time, actually. Uh, but nevertheless, I hope we get used to, to this. Distributions are just distributions. This is just another distribution. So hey, we can cope with that. We met many distributions so far. Turns out that it's an F distribution we should use. The F distribution uh, is, uh, just uh, looks a lot like the chi-square. Um, it comes in different versions. It depends on the number of groups. It depends on the number of observations. So it's the degrees of freedom that we already looked at in the table that are to be used as the degrees of freedom numerator and denominator to use the proper F distribution. And then we can do statistics. Here it comes. K equal to 3, N equal to 12 in this case. So three groups of 12 observations each. The F could be computed by manual computation. Now, I didn't show you the SSTR and SSE, but that could also be done by manual computations, as I've shown you, using the defining formulas I already shared with you. Then we find the F, and then we can find the p-value that goes with the hypothesis. And that comes here, because there is a PF function for probability of the F distribution, used with numerate degrees of freedom, denominate degrees of freedom. You don't have to write DF1 and DF2. It comes in that order, so you could just write K minus 1 and N minus K. Plugging in the F that I just computed, right? It's a number now. I compute a number, and I find the probability that my uh, F is larger than my observed f. That's a way to put it, right? Where the observed f is actually this one. This is the observed f. I find that probability to be larger than. So this is the, what is the probability of observing group differences more extreme than the group differences I saw in my data. 
the standard p-value hypothesis testing uh, paradigm. And as you already saw, back to the toy data. This was already collected to us. This was by default given to us in the last part of the ANOVA table of R and also in my formal table up there, that it actually takes, right, this is SSTR, this is SSE, it takes the 30.8 divides by 2 to get the mean square, right? And it takes the 5.2 divided by 9 to get the MSE. So it's just the degrees of freedom divided in the sums of squares. Then the F value here is the 15.40 divided by 0.58. It gives me 26.7. That's a large F value when you get to know them. F values when nothing is going on would be expected to be around 1. So an F value under the null hypothesis with really no group differences, F have an average almost, not exactly, but very close to 1. Um, and we see that on the P value, even though we have an almost ridiculously small data example here, right? Only 12 numbers, very, very small experiment. You don't get drugs on the American market by having a, an experiment with four patients in each of three groups, right? Uh, and also not on any other market, of course. And probably Bang & Olufsen also would not make major business decisions based on such data sets. Anyway. Even though, that's why, even though we have a ridiculously small data set, the difference is so clear that we saw in the beginning that it even becomes very significant, right? It finds the p-value. So that's the p-value I showed you before. You could find that by just plugging in the 26.7 in, in a call to the F, PF function that would give you this p-value, which makes us conclude what now? Are the three groups statistically different here? Yes, they are, because we reject the null of them being the same pretty clearly in this case, right? So that's as far as we have taken it now, and it's, we are ready to do the break of 15 minutes. So 